What's up guys, Vulcan here, and today we are finally reviewing Biomutant. So this was a game that I covered heavily right up until its launch, and then I seemingly just dropped off the face of the earth. Super I'm sorry about that, folks. I have been neck deep in the game trying to get as holistic an experience as I could for this review, so thank you for holding on. Now, when it comes to Biomutant, there's been such a wide range of impressions and experiences from the reviews that have been released so far. And it seems like there are good sized audiences that enjoy the game or dislike the game, but there's not really too many people just sitting right in the middle of the pack. So for instance, Metacritic is sitting at a 6.4 user score and a 67% critic score. Some bigger channels have released reviews calling it an empty waste of time, while others say it's a really solid game. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is this game has been incredibly polarizing, and it has been the first in a long time to seemingly have strong opinions on both sides, but really not too many folks right in the center. Now that brings us to my review where I guess I'm in the minority because my time and enjoyment with Biomutant is dead center. There are some things that I think are truly wonderfully executed and others that are incredibly out of place or just poorly implemented. I definitely enjoyed the game. I felt like it was a fun adventure, but there were some speed bumps along the way that really are going to turn away some players. So let's break down what Biomutant brings to the table after being delayed multiple years and being kept under wraps for so long. Now to get us started, I do want to talk about the story since this is a single player game and you're going to be spending most of your time interacting with story elements, the NPC, the narrator. Now to keep things spoiler free, I'm going to avoid any big plot elements, but on the nose, Biomutant's story isn't much different than what we were originally told, except we're dealing with two narratives. The first one covers the fact that you are a mutated creature that needs to form an alliance with some of the tribes and stop the world eaters. This is going to either save the world tree or let it die. The choice is entirely up to you. Now, the other is a quest for vengeance against a big bad guy named Lupa Lupin, who murdered some people that were near and dear to you. And kind of to help symbolize your decisions throughout the game, you're going to encounter the game's version of the angel and devil on your shoulder. And you're going to need to side with one of them to build an aura, which is basically your karma system. Now, this karma system determines a few things in the game, like dialogue options and some powers that you can unlock, and these align better with certain tribes as well. Really, guys, at the end of the day, don't overthink it. If you want to be dark, make the decision that seems super dark, like letting something die or killing a creature. If you want to be light, then save that person or pet and keep the creature. So it's really just not overly complicated. Um, but one of the things that I think is going to be key is figuring Figure out what end game skills that you want and then choose that particular aura or karma that you want to chase after. So at the end of the day, the story itself is pretty decent in my eyes. It's enough to keep me engaged throughout the game. There are a lot of players out there who feel the narration drags on a bit too long, but you can go in there and change some settings to either have the narrator talk more or talk less. They also released a patch very recently that lowers the time that it takes for the narrator to start translating the gibberish in the world. And when it comes to the world that you'll be exploring, I really loved running through the different environments, finding new areas that I needed to figure out how to traverse, whether it was because of a puzzle or rope walking or building resistances to dive deeper into the hazard zones. It was a good time, but I do have some concerns. Biomutant was touted as a massive open world full of cool encounters and secrets and puzzles and really something around every corner. What I experienced was a weirdly full yet empty world. I felt like there were tons of places to visit and explore. There was lots of mounts to collect, different things to engage with, but it took forever to get there. During my first 10 hours in the game, I was able to find some underground areas, treasure chests, vaults, and the loot they dropped was very, very under par, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, it just wasn't exciting or interesting because they're mostly stat sticks. Now, once I reached the 20 hour mark, that's when things started to get more interesting and the world started to become much more fun to explore. And I think Biomutant really made a mistake by not throwing players into the deep end from the beginning. 
they opted to have them slowly begin finding gear with perks or discovering these more densely packed areas that were a little more complex. So it just wasn't interesting within the first few hours. So don't get me wrong. I mean, the world is gorgeous. It's fun to explore. Like I mentioned, it just took too long to get there. Most players don't want to wait until the 20 hour mark to truly experience the world that Biomutant wants them to experience. Instead, they're just going to refund the game and then maybe pick it up on a sale. Granted, I did avoid a lot of the main story for a long time. I did a ton of side quests, but that didn't make a huge difference from what I heard from other creators. So I did mention loot and built. Now, when I originally started looking into Biomutant before the release, I was under the impression that this game would have a decent build variety and that your class, your mutations, and your breeds would heavily impact your playthrough. I can confidently say it really doesn't matter what you choose because unfortunately right now range damage rules everything. Skills deal such little damage compared to range combos. It feels like a wet noodle. I tried to play through as a caster and skill build at first and it just did not work. My key energy couldn't sustain my damage output. The damage itself was super lackluster. I ended up just using my guns anyway because most of the time I was out of mana. So if you're starting out, just go Deadeye. Choose whatever mutation you want. Melee damage, you can go that direction. It's decent, but you're exposing yourself to boss AOE, so it ends up being high risk, low reward compared to ranged. So unfortunately, ranged is just vastly superior to anything else in the game right now. Now, they are releasing patches. They are going through and kind of tackling everything. So hopefully, we'll see some adjustments. They did just roll out a new extreme difficulty because people were saying the game was way too easy. So if you're somebody who beat the game and wants to go back and have a challenge, look for that extreme difficulty. Now, when it comes to stats, mutations, and skills, I was again disappointed at the little amount of variety we had to actually choose from. The stats themselves felt pretty disjointed and they didn't carry much impact in my decision making. It was just like tossing some points into an area I thought I needed improvement and then moving on. For instance, Intelligence boosts your skill damage, key energy, and energy region, which allows you to use more skills, deal more skill damage, and that's great. Strength improved melee damage, but then you have agility that just increases movement speed, but not range damage. And then what about attack speed? What about all of these other stats that influence combat effectiveness? They just aren't there. Now I understand the crafting system is where a lot of the damage tweaking lives and we'll get to that in a minute, but it just seemed like a strange decision to kind of separate those out while also including the other two. So before we dive into crafting, I did want to make a pit stop and talk about loot a little bit. When I play a game, especially a role-playing game that has loot involved, I want my loot drops to be an exciting moment, something that really gets my mind going about how I can use it in a cool way or build around it and Biomutant simply doesn't have that. It has shock value um, when you first open something up and you see that kind of colored splash and then the item appears and you're like, oh my gosh, it's a legendary, it's an ultimate, whatever. So it has that, but then it doesn't have the uniqueness or the stats to back up that moment. The armor pieces are just basic stats with some areas for add-ons, giving even more basic stats. And when it comes to the weapons themselves, it's cool to find a piece with a neat perk, but it's only one perk and you can't stack these up and kind of build around them to make this kind of ultimate character. You can dual wield, that's about as intense as it gets. You have two perks going, but that still just isn't overly exciting. And I mean, even the vault I opened up had a rogue jacket that dropped, which was exciting at the time because it was my first rare drop. And one, it was way too high for my level. It was around level 20 and I was level five, so I couldn't even use it. And I was a very long ways away from using it. And it didn't have any interesting stats or perks or any sort of uniqueness about it. It was just rogue jacket. And then by the time I got to 20, I had so much stuff that was way better than that jacket that it didn't even matter to begin with. And this represents all of the loot in the game. Each piece has a few basic stats and that's about it. And then when you reach a certain level, you'll start seeing gear drop with perks, which was a breath of fresh air. That's when things started to get more interesting, like the blast powder perk. This causes all your ranged ammunition to detonate in an AOE around the target. And these type of things are great, but again, they aren't interesting enough to experiment with, to keep me interested or stack up to create a kind of all powerful, unique build. It was just pick one, maybe two if you're dual wielding, and that's about it. 
So now we've covered a lot of kind of the speed bumps, right? The negative parts of the game. Let's move on to the crown jewel, and that's the crafting system. This was easily the most hyped and talked about piece in Biomutant, and this really feels like where the developers literally dumped all of their time and effort. Now, I'm not saying they didn't try in other parts of the game, so don't get me wrong, you know, there. But what I mean is you can tell they really wanted to make crafting unique, and they really wanted to nail this system. And because of that, it took a lot of their focus and attention off of other things. So this crafting system allows you to take all of these different kind of gizmos and gadgets that you find out in the world and strap them together to make some hilarious looking weapons. And the system itself is simple. It's easy to understand. And the possibilities are nearly endless. I mean, you have roughly a million different combinations that you can have for your pieces of gear. But again, I really wish the items had a slew of game altering effects or over the top perks that you could really build around and stack together. Again, it's just a very sore point in terms of, okay, well, now I have this weapon that deals X damage type and has this one perk, and that's it. I just wish there was a little bit more oomph to that system. So once everything is said and done, right? You beat the game, awesome, congrats. The game does have a new game plus, and this new game plus will allow you to skip all of the tutorial missions and the childhood village. Instead, you're going to start at the base of the world tree and begin the tribe wars all over again. Now to build upon this, the developers are releasing some updates to help address issues, uh, feedback from the community. So hopefully we'll see some of those skill damage boosts, more interesting potential for builds. So we'll just have to wait and see what they bring to the table there. So let's go ahead and do a quick pros and cons wrap up with a nice little summary tagline at the top. So to me, Biomutant is a game that focused more on breadth than it did depth. It has a wide array of things to engage with, but it's as deep as a puddle. Now, fortunately, the game is creative and it's unique, enough so to keep me constantly engaged in the world and turning over every rock and exploring every nook and cranny to find something even more wacky than the last thing I saw. Now, while the character building is super lacking in my eyes, I feel like hopefully the game does well enough in terms of finance that the team at Experiment 101 can expand and continue building on the franchise because I think this is something that could truly expand into a really, really cool IP. So the game does a few things well. The world is absolutely gorgeous. It's fun to explore. Even though combat is heavily biased towards ranged, it is punchy and satisfying. It's fun to fight things. Mountain creatures, insanely creative. Absolutely love the mountain creatures we have in this game. I personally liked the narrator and kind of the weird language the creatures developed. It really felt like an awesome world building aspect. Side note, went to college for video game world building. Um, didn't work out, but it was a super cool course and really wish I could have dove a little bit deeper into that. So seeing things like the weird language really really helps add some credibility to this strange world that we're exploring. But the game also does have shortcomings. Builds virtually non-existent for an action RPG, which is weird. Loot is super boring. Stats felt disjointed, which caused a disconnect between my character and me. The skills themselves that you could unlock using your psi powers didn't really feel like damage skills. A lot of them were utility. One of the most expensive ones was turtle form, which was once again kind of weird that that would be the kind of top end one that you can grab. So there was just a lot of strange design decisions that really felt like they weren't focusing on allowing you to build a character, more so your character is just a vehicle to explore the world itself. So all in all, I don't regret my purchase, you know, but my recommendation is wait for a sale, pick it up then. Right now, it's not worth the price tag. I think $40 is a little bit more comfortable. So hopefully during the holiday season, we'll see a nice deep discount and you guys can pick it up later. All right, guys, like I said, thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you guys for waiting on this review. It took forever to create. Um, I dove in and started playing on launch day the second I could, but with everything going on outside of the YouTube channel, being a new dad and work and really kind of everything else pulling my attention away, I haven't had as much time to play games recently. So this was a little bit longer than I typically would have liked to spend on reviewing and editing and all that fun stuff. But like I said, thank you guys so much for sticking around. I do appreciate the support. This has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you guys on the next one.